This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Asian fuel exporters are hungrily eyeing Australia as the country's shutdown of almost all its refineries creates a bright demand spot amid otherwise coronavirus crimped markets. China appears to be best placed to take advantage of the opportunity, industry sources and analysts told Reuters, potentially leapfrogging the current top suppliers Singapore and South Korea in the scramble for a piece of the action. Australia, already the region's largest fuel importer, will likely boost imports by a third next year to 630,000 barrels per day, BPD, according to energy consultancy FGE. China booked its largest purchase of U.S. corn since January, the U.S. Department of Agriculture said on Tuesday. The USDA confirmed that private exporters sold 1.156 million tons of U.S. corn to China the biggest sale announced through the USDA's daily reporting system since January 29, when China bought 2.1 million tons of the grain in the second-largest U.S. corn sale on record. The USDA has projected that China will import a historically large 24 million tons of corn globally in the 2020-21 marketing year, in addition to other feed grains including barley, sorghum and wheat, as the country strives to rebuild its massive hog herd that has been hit by diseases. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. China foiled criminals seeking to smuggle nearly 1 million ton of refined oil worth 5 billion yuan, $770 million, with officials seizing 11 ships and detaining 171 suspects in a sprawling swoop on Tuesday, customs authorities said. The operation, which saw customs officers from the port city of Ningbo join forces with local law enforcement and maritime police, spanned eight Chinese regions including the coastal provinces of Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Shandong and Fujian, the General Administration of Customs said in a statement. A total of 14 gangs were busted on Tuesday, the agency added. It was not immediately clear if the gangs were trying to smuggle the oil into or out of the country. China is Asia's biggest refiner and consumer of oil products such as gasoline and diesel. Leading Japanese lenders have joined an initiative that links the provision of shipping finance to cuts in carbon dioxide emissions as the sector accelerates efforts to go green. In recent weeks, Shinsei Bank Limited 8303, T, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, Sumitomo Mitsui Finance and Leasing and MUFG Bank have signed up to the scheme, the bank said. With about 90% of world trade transported by sea, global shipping accounts for nearly 3% of the world's CO2 emissions. Japan is one of the world's major maritime hubs, especially for shipbuilding. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The global aluminium industry must slash greenhouse gas emissions by 77% by 2050 to meet climate change goals, largely through shifting to green electricity, the International Aluminium Institute said on Tuesday. The challenge for us and for many sectors is reducing those emissions while growing production to meet demand, Chris Bayliss, IAI Deputy Secretary General, told an online briefing. About 60% of aluminium emissions are from electricity used to smelt raw materials into the lightweight metal, according to a report released by the industry group on Tuesday that detailed ways to reduce emissions. Benchmark iron ore futures in China gained as much as 5.2% on Tuesday clawing back losses as the market tried to narrow the spread between spot and futures prices, while Tongshan lifting a smog alert also fueled sentiment. The most traded iron ore futures on the Dalian Commodity Exchange, for May delivery, ended up 3.9% at 1,070 yuan, $164.69, per ton after hitting 1,084 yuan earlier during the session. As of Monday, the contract had fallen nearly 12% from March 4. Traders usually narrow basis between spot and futures prices ahead of delivery, said Tang Binghua, an analyst with founder CIFCO Futures in Beijing. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Germany's 2021 wheat crop of all types will increase slightly by 0.9% on the year to 22.34 million tons 
the country's Association of Farm Cooperatives said in its first harvest estimate on Tuesday. The association forecast Germany's 2021 winter rapeseed crop will record a small fall of 0.7% from last summer's crop to 3.48 million tons. German grains and rapeseed crops generally survived bitterly cold winter temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees centigrade this winter, the association said. Snow cover had protected crops from low temperatures, but frost damage is still possible, it said. In 2020 frosts in May had hit crops. That is all for today's news on the commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow TV as we continue to provide you with more updates. You can also follow us on Twitter at TradeFlowTV1 which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop.